Hello YouTube, this is that BMX guy. Today I'm going to install more RAM in my computer. This is 12 gigabytes of DDR3, 3 by 4. Um, it's for this DFI here. This is my old DFI computer. It's very dusty inside. Right now it just has six gigabytes and Windows 7. So maybe I'll clean this off or something. Or I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The whole reason why I don't use water cooling is because you gotta maintain it. At least with air cooling, you don't have to worry about it so much. Anyway, we'll take this cover off and I'll show you what's inside. You see there's this Brompton folding blank in the way. I can see it's a Brompton as a stand-up thing for that. So inside here, if you can see, it's kind of hard to see. That's why I'm going to move the computer as I install this. But there's three memory chips. This is triple channel. This is an i7-920. Um, it's a DFI. UTX58 motherboard and my sound blaster. So I guess it's a 900 watt power supply and my one hard drive because I just really don't see any real purpose in needing RAID. Um, this computer is now over 12 years old. It's, you know, 2009 is when I bought it, or assembled it. It went through a few video cards. That video card in there now is the EVGA GT 1030 um, for the apartment here. It's kind of just set up with a TV. It's powered up. So as it powers up, it, I would like to just get to the bias, but I don't think I got to it. Okay, so what we gotta make sure of is the memory is kind of set on SPD. So I'm not really sure where that is exactly. Is this here? No. Look, you see right now, this is six gigabytes. I think it's that thing. D-ring time, here it is. So yeah, I got it on automatic. So that should be fine. We'll hope that the, when I put the new RAM in, it just works right away. So we'll just exit. Transfer. So, this is just a big, I don't know what size TV it is. I'm going to say 40 inch. But I kind of use it as a, my normal monitor with this computer lately. So I'm just going to shut it off. I'm still using Windows 7. I'm on this system, I kind of find it better just to stick with the old operating system that built with it. It originally did have Vista, and when Windows 7 came out in 2009, that was pretty much like right after I bought Vista, and I was kind of pissed off. But I did put 7 on here anyway. 7's on one more of my other systems. Um, no, I don't have to Okay, so I'm gonna power it off. So the RAM going in this is Corsair Vengeance DDR3. It's a total of 12 gigabytes. 
I guess the chips have these big heat sinks, but the ring coming out of the computer is gonna have large heat sinks too. So I'll get that thing set up on this little bench and I'll get the changes. Okay, so I got the computer up on the bench. I got it still grounded with the monitor at least. Um, now what's interesting about not having fans in there other than this one is that kind of stays pretty clean. Um, it's a very open case situation. But as you can see, this RAM in here has these huge heat sinks too. So I'm gonna start pulling them out. I'm gonna ground myself. I'm gonna pull them out one at a time. So the ramp should just come right out. I still have the original, I don't know what you call them things, packaging. So yeah, we'll pull these out one by one. Get an idea what they look like. Oh, these are dominators, that's right. So these guys were overclockable sticks, but I never really overclocked them. I think what's gonna happen is it's gonna sell them. See if somebody wants them. But they're actually in very good shape, they're not bad or anything. I just know, like, since Flash was disabled, I'm trying to get this in here. We got at least one stick in one of these things. The other ram is more interesting because fins face me. Showing the video, I'm just putting them in the packages. Also, still got their box. This is the original Corsair box that it came in many years ago. I always hoard my packaging for things. I just like knowing that I can put the stuff back in it when I'm done with it. At some point, this did have a video card in it with two cables that hook to it. So they're just sort of sitting right here. Uh, the GTX 285s, I think, used both of these. Now, this is in there and nothing used it. There used to be this big red thing that was on the heatsink, and I took that off because it just seemed like it was holding heat on that heat sink but if you look at the DFI land party board there's like this whole heat pipe situation there's even like a heat pipe thing that hung off the back that went to here or something uh, I don't know so this is my computer for many years we're gonna see if the RAM Changing to 12 gigabytes helps. Flash. That's up there. So now we're gonna put these guys in it. So I gotta undo this packaging, and that requires two hands. Okay, so I got the tape off the package. Still can't get it open. I can just make it so it's kind of a pain in the ass 
it's interesting how they change the packaging so extremely to like very small packaging. And so all these RAM sticks are on a separate little tiny plastic thing. Um, the timings are 999 and 24. They're 1600s. To save engines. I think so. Um, I have engines on my other computer. The newer computer I have is a 3930K with a Asus PX79 Pro. Um, that one has four six of engines RAM, but they're engines RAM that are low profile because there's RAM on both sides of the heatsink, and the heatsink is pretty much double the size of that guy. So that guy's pretty big. The other one's definitely double the size. Okay, so the RAM should be, you know, should practice safety with static if you can. If you're like me, you just, just touch the case of the computer, it's just easier. It might not be easy to get the RAM out of the slots, but they are pretty easy to figure out which way to go. There's a longer and a shorter groove. You figure out the shorter groove faces down, so we'll get that on there. Try to align it right. This is hard to see. Like even for you, but for me it's just as good. That should just snap right in there. Get the one package out of the way. And for the next time we stick. Let's try to open the one hand again. The man should just fall out of the package this time. one-handed procedure it's kind of a little harder to do one-handed versus two-handed. I'll get to throw the packages across the room I guess. I, I don't know. I, I just like doing something clean it up. So all three sticks are about to be in. I can actually see where this one goes. It's pretty full right? It should be in that room. See, all three six are in. Uh, so I think maybe clean the heat sink off or the fan. Or check the fins. I guess I don't really need to. I used to run these computers like all day, every day, running distributed computing things. But lately I'm not doing that, so I don't really get as dusty as I used to. Like this filter on the front on these Antec 300s works very well. I'll probably clean that. But right now, I'm just gonna see if this memory works. So in a minute, I'll move this back over to its little hole. Okay, so it's back in its position. There's some lights up in there. I could hit the on off button to somewhere easy to find, or I guess it is pretty easy to find. It's that green light there. I guess I could just do that. See if all the codes are right. Oh, looks like it. The RAM codes look okay. The dot. So we go back to the systems. Ah, it's green. So as the TV turns on, since it has to turn off every time I unplug the computer from it. Let's here. So 
we'll just see what it does. It should just light up. It actually takes longer for the TV to boot than the damn computer. Okay, so it looks like it loaded. So, let's check how much memory is in here. Okay, so it's showing it has a total of 12 gigabytes of memory. Um, cache is only 377. But the main thing that was an issue is like running Firefox it always needs a lot of RAM now and it kind of gets on my nerves that all the browsers are doing that and it's because they don't have a flash plugin anymore the flash plugin took up a lot of its own memory so you got four gigabytes of usage from just a stupid browser like this and I even limited it like to have minimal CPU use and other things so it kind of looks like it looted that fine uh, yeah the, the upgrade probably was worth it I don't know I don't really have any way to test it as far as if it makes a difference but I was able to upgrade the computer quickly, painlessly. So it's nice to have 12 gigabytes of RAM in there versus just, you know, six. Uh, I would try to start out on that up or something, but I guess I can. So the one thing about Battle.net, it does seem to take up a lot of memory too. So we can kind of look at it this way. The thing I don't like about Battle.net is it just seems to be a very bloated video game software lately. It used to be like a little bit less pain in the ass, but since whenever Legion came out for World of Warcraft, it's like both the game and Battle.net just take up too much freaking memory. And it's a low graphics game. It's not like it's like, you know, a high performance video game with realistic graphics or anything like that for some reason it has to take up so much memory <clears throat> so it still takes forever to load I don't know like it just hangs here it's connected oh I know why Right again. So it's, I had my firewall on. I have a firewall that kind of works pretty decent in the sense that it will stop that from doing anything. Okay, so it's loading. So just loading Battle.net, it's like two gigabytes of RAM, which is kind of annoying. I stop this crap. So, I'm looking at the RAM as it's loading, so we're going to load the game. And just loading the, the game itself gets it to 3 gigabytes. And we go into the world just go into that screen it goes up to 
I'm not sure if it's it's because of my GT 1030 or not also because like sometimes it seems like it could just be the video card but yeah it does take a while to load even with 12 gigabytes but you see how it's skyrocketing its memory and filling up that memory up so before I only had six so it'd be almost pretty much topping off just loading the game So I don't really play the game as much as I used to. I'm still level level, I guess. But just getting to this screen where you're kind of at your home world, it gets to like almost five gigabytes, 4.67. So with six gigabytes, you just load one more map and it's kind of filling it up. Like every time you load a different zone, it keeps loading one more gigabyte. And it just seemed like it was lagging down, so. At least the 12 gigabytes kind of helps with this game anyway. Yeah, so. Let's minimize this, I guess. What's that? But yeah, it. I guess it helped a little bit. Well, I don't usually have any hiccups with the RAM as far as it not working, but I'm not overclocking it either. Like, I don't really think overclocking is worth the time. It's great to be able to overclock a system, but it's just a waste of money if you blow up your memory sticks or you blow up your CPU. Now the CPUs are like, at the minimum, $150 for something that's not even better than this i7-920. That's ridiculous. It, the prices of CPUs are just outrageous, actually, for what they are. Yeah, I do want to build a new system, but I can't build a new system if I can't afford it. I, I shouldn't have to spend $2,000 on just a motherboard, memory, and a CPU. It shouldn't be $2,000 fucking dollars to have something better than even this i7-920 with the DFI box with the old X58 chipset. I mean, I want to go at least double the cores of the 3930K. I'm not going to just get some other 6-core CPU. It's supposed to be brand new. That's like seven hundred or eight hundred dollars. I just can't do that. I just don't have that kind of money to throw away. So yeah, so this is a video on me upgrading the RAM in my DFI system or my i7 927 system that is over ten years old now to twelve gigabytes. So this is that big guy, and thanks for watching.